Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 8. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for Episode 9. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was actually very interesting. I really did enjoy it overall. Like, I thought it actually flowed pretty well as an episode, and... Yes, the cliffhanger wasn't like the biggest cliffhanger, but what happened with the development of the fire meta was actually very interesting and in how they linked it to Chester in the episode. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. We're going to be going chronologically through the episode. So the episode begins with Dion who returns for a brief moment and he also comes back at the end of the episode. And he's got his green eyes, and that's how he starts the episode, and so he's checking on Iris, and she's all okay, supposedly, he doesn't detect anything off, and then, you know, she also goes on to tell him about her forgetfulness and some of the things that she's been experiencing recently. And so shortly after this, he realizes that something is actually off, and he retreats, basically saying, oh, I'm gonna find out more information, and find out basically what's going on with you and then at the end of the episode Dion actually returns and basically is like yeah there is something very very wrong with you Iris and your time sickness but they actually cut us off at the end of the episode before they get to any of those revelations and so obviously it's a cliffhanger I don't feel like it was the best cliffhanger because it was literally just gonna be some sort of explanation of why Iris's time sickness is being so bad but I don't think it's like a huge revelation like something like, you know, a villain reveal or something. So that's just my personal opinion. So I didn't particularly like how the episode ended. But yeah, it makes sense that they wanted to sort of prolong this a little bit longer. And so let's go to back to the start of the episode. We have Team Flash who are stuck on a dead end with the crime scene. They're like, what's going on? We can't figure out anything to do with this meta. We get mention of why Caitlyn's not in this episode, obviously Frost is there and you know they've recently been doing their picking and choosing between who shows up, are they going to show up at the same time and so Caitlyn is currently away in Metropolis with Marcus apparently since she basically let go of all the stuff she had in her past she's been having fun, she's been going away and she is like going all these places with Marcus. I still don't buy into it because like this is all happening off screen and it feels just like an excuse to have Caitlyn away and Frost around instead of her. So I really don't know what to think about Caitlyn and Marcus, I, I do feel like it's very forced. That's just my personal opinion. And so the firepower meta, Chester has some sort of tracker that can track the moment that he turns his flames on essentially. However that tracker actually doesn't really work later in the episode because we get various instances where it actually shows up and yes at one point it works because Barry goes to the crime scene and he sees the newly burnt body and so that is something that literally happens right after this so the charred body is on the ground he sees the black fire which is the big revelation in this episode because yes it is black fire and it's like nothing we've ever seen before and so the victim is someone who teaches classes they contain you know the black flame in a container they bring him back to star labs and that's where basically the storyline between the black flame and chester starts and so this flame is still burning and everything and it seemingly gets out and it's able to track down them at star labs and we're still in the kind of unknown period of like who is controlling this black flame is it someone that they know is it someone completely new is it someone dead is the black flame controlling the actual flame and it's not a real person is it a ghost and so talking of ghosts or phantoms we have mention of someone walking through walls who is the phantom of coast city and so iris goes with sue as Sue shows up to CC Citizen Media, apparently Sue is the one who has funded the offices and, you know, all the new employees, because apparently she's a billionaire now, I had no idea. Like, I think I totally forgot about that. I don't know if that's something that they reference in the past, but she's hella rich, it seems, and they really emphasize this in this episode. And so, talking of Virus and Sue, so they have this talk 
just after they meet and they go to Coast City and she's interested in why Iris is interested in making this new meta basically the streak part two so a new version of what she did in the past with Barry basically showing you know the good in these metas rather than the bad in these metas because obviously a lot of people look at some metas and they're scared of them because of their powers but Iris obviously wants to do some good and so the person that they confront in Coast City which again is the city of Green Lantern Hal Jordan that is where he's from and so we have been there a couple of times before just briefly and so we're going to be there next episode as well I believe because at the end of the episode Iris and Sue stay on in Coast City along with Tinya Wizzo. and so this is the character that we've been waiting for for a while finally we get the debut of the character and so Tinya is actually in the comics Phantom Girl and so that's explains you know her phantom like powers how she can walk through walls and so that's obviously a legion of superheroes character so that is a big kind of supergirl link there again i don't know if there is any sort of link with this character to anyone on supergirl because she is new to her powers and even though she can seemingly use them pretty good it doesn't look like she's had any experience at all and so that's maybe a thing for the future where she becomes a superhero and she's able to use her powers and eventually become Phantom Girl and maybe link up with the Legion in the future. So that's very exciting. I was very excited when I heard her name and I can't wait to see what happens with her next. And so she doesn't want to collaborate with Iris's idea of helping Metas in Co City because she's just looking for her mum. That's what she's doing and she doesn't care about Iris's proposal especially at the start of the episode. And so, then we continue, we had the Black Flame materializing out of nowhere, which he does many times in this episode, basically attacking Chester in his dreams, and we're like, how is this going on? Because Chester wakes up, it turns out it's a dream or a nightmare, and that Cecile was like, oh, he's really struggling. I mean, I feel like Cecile in this episode, this is another nitpick, I don't feel like she needed to say half of the stuff she said, because we can feel that as an audience member, we don't need to be told that. And I feel like that's the whole reason why Cecile is there to tell us the character's emotions. But really, in film and TV, you're supposed to just feel it rather than being told, oh, this is how one character is feeling, this is how the other character is feeling. But that's just a personal nitpick of mine. And so Allegra goes to talk to Chester after he has this nightmare. And she basically comforts him, and that's a big thing in this episode. Chester and Allegra getting closer and closer and closer. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go on throughout this review. But let's move back to Coast City where we have Iris who reveals that she has the time sickness to Sue. And what it means is still a mystery even to her. I feel like it's going in an interesting direction, but right now and in the past... We've been explained absolutely nothing about the time sickness and it came absolutely out of nowhere. There was no kind of lead up to Iris becoming sick with this time sickness. It just popped out of nowhere because they needed an excuse for Candace to not be around. And so they were like, oh, maybe she's like displaced throughout time and she has like an illness. And so it does feel like they're kind of prolonging this. And I would like to see some sort of light at the end of the tunnel for this storyline. Hopefully sooner rather than later all right so she feels like she's starting to lose time and sue listens and compares iris's predicament to her relationship with her parents and the fact that she needs to confront this fear that she has of losing time she seemingly does this at the end of the episode when dion shows up obviously that's cut right at the end of the episode because that's when we end and go to credits so let's talk a little bit about chester in this episode so there's lots of ominous shots of chester alone basically encircled and kind of trapped in star labs by black flame and obviously that kind of camera work suggests that the Black Flame is watching him and that Chester is never alone. The camera work definitely teases what's about to come because you feel that the Black Flame or someone is watching. And so Allegra shows up, talks to him a little bit, and then the Black Flame shows up again, but this time in reality materializing in front of Chester and Allegra. And at the nick of time, Barry shows up and spooks off the fire meta. Even though his attack literally does nothing to it because he is just 
made up of flames essentially and they are not normal flames so they can't just be like blown away by Barry's hands if he vibrates them very hard and so shortly after this they're theorizing about what is actually going on with the black flame and so they come to the conclusion that the killer is never at the crime scenes and that they are attacking from somewhere else basically that they can summon and materialize the flames out of nowhere and attack these people and so you know that is obviously a big revelation for them because they think oh this person is at the crime scene every time committing the murders but no it seems the flames are some sort of proxy that is like an extension of the person controlling them and still that person is a mystery Chester thinks he finds out who the fire matter is he thinks it's a ghost and that he's been haunted by his dad who died in a fire it's poignant but it's not the real identity of the fire meta because that is pretty much revealed right after that like we know this fire meta is just playing into Chester's mind and it's revealed that he is feeding on grief and that's part of the way that the black flame gains his power and that is obviously revealed by Cecile and she also mentions like a bunch of other emotions that she feels and basically the Black Flame is able to harness this to his needs and so let's move back to Co City we have Tinya who is looking for her mum so she goes to this apartment and so she searched for her at CC Jitters where apparently her mum works and now at her apartment where she is confronted by Iris and also Sue who are able to track her down basically revealing what they are doing there and like why they're so interested in her and so she uses her powers to try and find her mum and basically to show that she's become something special and that she isn't something that should have been thrown away in the past in the case of her mum and so this is Tinya's whole reason for using her powers is not to do anything bad because one of the reasons I think why Iris was interested by the case, number one, it's weird. Number two, yes, it's in a completely different city. It's in the west coast of America in Coast City rather than Central City. Most metas are centralized around Central City due to the particle accelerator explosion. However, as it's revealed this episode and it's been talked about many times before, there are metas all over the place. Because, you know, people have metagenes and people maybe have been in contact with people from Star City. Maybe they were there and they moved back to where they're from. So there's metas everywhere, basically. And so with this, she was interested by all of this. But also because of her unique powers and the fact that maybe it was some sort of criminal that they could have taken down and got a story. Or if they were good, you know, they could bring them to the good side, essentially, and have them as their new version of the streak. And so back at Star Labs, the Star Labs alarms go off, everything is going crazy, and apparently there are coal fires everywhere throughout the building because the Black Flame is back, and Cecile has her usual breakdown that she has like pretty much nearly every episode because she is overwhelmed by emotions. And so the Black Flame once again materializes into Chester's dad, actually coming into a form that is actually the first time that they do that obviously we've seen them materialize a couple of times but this time the black flame is playing into Chester's mind and so even though this scene was quite powerful I did think it was a little bit anticlimactic considering that you know Allegra and also Cecile were just standing there talking to them none of them were actually scared by the black flame like that dude holds a lot of power and even if you know that it's not Chester's dad Aren't you scared of it? Like, wouldn't you be ready to pounce against them? Like, isn't Allegra in some sort of fighting position? And why don't they, you know, call someone else for backup? I don't really understand that. And I think it kind of took down the stakes in that scene. However, yes, it is very powerful with Chester facing off against his dad. Because that is obviously something that he's needed to do for a while. And so Chester is basically becoming a part of it and that the black flame is feeding off his grief as I explained earlier and he's hungry for it. And so in the meantime Flash and Frost are cornered in the speed lab by the rest of the flames that are going around everywhere and so they don't really do much so there's just like a bunch of shots of them standing in the room basically being encircled by the flames. 
And so then Team Flash, after this attack, once the flames go away, after Chester has confronted his dad and you know everything's done because he rejects the Black Flames manipulations. So with Team Flash regrouping, talking about what actually went down, Joe apparently has been doing some digging in the meantime, obviously he wasn't at Star Labs, and he basically makes the point that all of the victims suffered some sort of grief, some sort of loss, and it seems that is what the Black Flame is targeting, and this plays into what Chester has been feeling recently with his dad, and the fact that, you know, he died, and yes, he got to see him in the past, and he was happy, but there could have been so much more, and we get like a little bit of a montage just before this, where we see what could have been with them in Star Labs, and them like taking photos with the flash suit, having a cup of Star Labs coffee, it's quite nice to see, and even though it's not a reality, it's something that Chester would have liked to happen, but obviously that's not the case, and that's not how life works, and he basically has to overcome it, and he overcomes it in this episode, and so he's basically feeding on grief and sorrow to survive, and so the flames are alive, and when Chester rejects his fake dad, basically he kind of disintegrates back into the flames, and so, yeah, the big reveal here is pretty much that the flames are alive and that there is actually someone controlling them, even though they're not here right now. And so, let's talk about another part of the story this episode that is heavily pushed. So, online people have been talking a lot about Allegra and Chester and the fact that they're being pushed very hard, especially in this episode. And we make the biggest progress in terms of their relationship in this episode because at the end of the episode they hold hands and throughout the whole episode we have many many conversations with them because arguably Chester is probably the main character of this episode even over the Flash and over anyone else maybe apart from Iris I think it's like an Iris Chester episode separately with their own stories and so Allegra and Chester are being pushed very very hard and I think it's definitely something that's going to be happening and with the fact that they hold hands at the end of the episode is definitely teasing lots more to come. And I'm not completely against it because I thought this episode was pretty good and I thought that they had a good connection in this episode. Still think it's weird that Allegra is calling him Chuck, maybe it's his official nickname now. However, that was the name she used when she didn't know his name. And so, yeah, well, what do you guys think about that? Let me know in the comments down below. But let's talk about the ending, so we have Barry and Iris on a video call, and so apparently Iris is staying on in Coast City for a bit longer, so that probably means next episode as well, and so Sue is also apparently a billionaire, which is very interesting, as I mentioned before, and Tinya is sticking around with Iris, probably going to see her next episode too, that means, and then Barry warns Iris to be careful with the fire meta around Central City, so he's like, oh, maybe it's probably for the best because I don't know what I would do if the fire meta came for you and obviously you weren't able to stop it let's say and so Barry and Iris I have to say have been very separate in these last episodes I feel like we only had that one scene at the start of what was it last week's episode or the week before and yeah it's definitely because Iris has a whole own storyline and so basically she's going off in separate directions but we don't get like the end of the episode or like midway through the episode where they rejoin together. In fact, it's pretty much mostly separate. Like we have Barry with new Team Flash and with Joe and Cecile and everyone. And then we have Iris with Allegra when she's there, obviously at the start of this episode. And now she has Sue and now she has Tinya, basically forming another team, a journalism team to the show. And so that makes them very separate, but unlike Superman Lois, where you have Clark and Lois who regularly come back together, like in the episode, like at least two to three times, maybe even four times, and they have a couple of big scenes pretty much every episode together, even if they have a completely different storyline that they're going on, like if Superman's being Superman, if Lois is doing reporting, they always come back together. And so I get it that they're in Coast City and they can't do that. But I would really like it in the future if we get more kind of going back together, just resetting the normal. And yeah, you can go out on your separate adventures, but come back together at the end. It would be nice for us fans of the show. 
And so, yeah, the final thing in the episode is Dion shows up saying he has bad news, and then the episode ends. So, we'll find out what bad news he was actually talking about sometime next week in the episode. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.